All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. It's uh, three minutes after noon. I don't know about you, Chris, but it has dawned on me that the absolute most excruciating way to make time slow down is to wait to start a webinar. <laughs> I, I, that I three agree. minutes just feels like forever. It was, so, a, it was a long time, but I'll tell you, I'm glad that we had the three minutes because I took a sip of my coffee and I dang near almost choked to death. So it gave oh, no. me time to get all the coughing out of the way. So it, was, it worked out. It worked out. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to report that both of our panelists today are still alive despite their best attempts uh, to otherwise sabotage their mortality. So, Chris, uh, I'm so glad to have you here and all of our participants. I'm really excited to talk with you today about a very timely topic, which is how to achieve sales success. And we're going to learn a little bit about doing that with HubSpot. Uh, so with that in mind, let me first uh, take a few moments uh, and we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, you are joined by two presenters today. My name's Doug Went. I am the Chief Growth Officer of Went Partners. I'm talking to you from the great borough of Queens in uh, New York City. And I am joined by my colleague and counterpart in crime, Chris Moore. Chris, tell us a little bit about you and your role at HubSpot and also why you have horns on the wall behind you <laughs> next to your HubSpot logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, First of all, thank, thank you everybody uh, for joining this morning or this afternoon, uh, depending on where you're at. Uh, my name is Chris Moore. I'm a channel account manager here at HubSpot. Been here for, free, uh, for a few years now uh, and, and been in the tech space and in the agency space for about 17 years now. Uh, so I really understand this space quite well. Um, the horns in the back, I, I'm a little bit of a Longhorns fan. If you haven't picked up on that, I think I'll give everybody the full <laughs> view here. They're everywhere in this office. You can't get enough of them. Uh, I'm from Texas. Uh, I live in Nashville now, though. Uh, so, yeah, it's good to meet everybody. All right. Chris, thank you again for taking time out of your busy day to be a part of today's program. I'm really excited to get rolling with you, my friend. Absolutely. So let me set a couple of housekeeping items for everybody. Just a few things. First of all, uh, this program is being recorded and will be shared with you and on social media. We'll be taking the recording, placing it on YouTube, as well as providing you with the recording link. Uh, in addition, time permitting, near the end of the program today, and we are, we will strictly hold to our plan. We're starting at noon and ending at 1 Eastern, so we've got one hour together. Uh, time permitting, we'll answer question, questions submitted using the Q&A link, which is at the bottom of your screen in the Zoom interface. And last but not least, you will receive some follow-up with us, including instructions for setting up your own HubSpot account, uh, which could be free or paid, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we get uh, going as well. So again, we're recording the program. We look forward to Q&A and we'll make sure that everybody has a chance to experience HubSpot for themselves. And with that in mind, I'm excited to begin our discussion about leveraging HubSpot for sales success. In order to do that, let's talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to sales, which is to put a very positive spin on it, what I'm calling the inside sales revolution. And the fact that the things that uh, we're looking at on this slide aren't happening right now. Uh, these are photos from our office, and these all represent things that I used to do every day until March of this year. Um, and I myself uh, have historically been an outside salesperson. Um, and now we're in a world that requires us to think differently about that. You know, Chris, I know you've worked for uh, a company, a major company that was focused primarily on outside sales. Now you're with a company that's very focused on inside sales. Talk a little bit about your experience going from one kind of culture to the other. And let's unpack a little bit of what an inside sales revolution that we're experiencing looks like from your perspective. Yeah, it's interesting. Um... I started off in outside sales when I had, I, I ran an agency with a buddy of mine that, uh, that actually works here at HubSpot, Nicholas Holland. We ran an agency uh, here in, in, in Nashville. And of course that was all outside sales for us. We were literally knocking on doors uh, in the beginning, right? Just trying to sell, sell our, our services to anybody that would listen, dogs and cats included. Uh, and so uh, it's, that's the only way I knew. And then I went to work for Dell for, for a number of years uh, and, and did, inside in the beginning, but, but really spent a lot of time outside selling. And I, and I truly believe that 
people made decisions with that face-to-face -face connection that, that, right. that, that it, you know, you had to go out to golf or dinner, or, you know, had to do some of those things to close deals. Um, because right. that's just what I knew. That's what they, and sometimes there would be three, four, five resources at Dell in the same meeting. Uh, and then when I came to HubSpot, we didn't have a single outside salesperson. No teams here are outside. Now, we occasionally will go meet with a client face to face sometimes, but most of the sales are done just the same way that we're doing it right here through Zoom, through right. phone calls, sometimes never even seeing the person. Because and that predates people, COVID. This is just yeah, how business that's, has that's been done at HubSpot. That's right. Closing million dollar deals without ever seeing anybody. It's, it blew my mind. Like I couldn't, it, it took me a while for my, to wrap my head around that. Um, but now, now the time that we're in currently and, and for the foreseeable future, I don't know how long this is going to last. Um, it's all, I'm, I'm glad that we are kind of set up for that. And yes. so, and I'm glad that you're, that you're hosting this webinar so we can talk through helping other people get there as well. Yes. You know, and I'll throw a couple of other uh, thoughts on the table. So it's interesting, you know, since we've worked together, Chris, uh, uh, our company, Went Partners, has historically had a very uh, outsider hybrid approach. So if you encountered me three years ago, our approach was entirely an outside approach. It was primarily driven by uh, referrals and by relationship development, pressing the flesh, networking meetings, and that model worked very, very well for us. Uh, we then added an inside sales component about a year ago primarily for the purpose of generating more leads that would then be pursued in person, outside sales. So as of March, we were sort of a one third inside, two thirds outside operation. And then within two weeks, we had to pivot uh, and we pivoted into a completely inside model. I didn't honestly know if we could do it. Um, you know, we're, we, I, I myself had hesitations about whether we could sell consulting and complex services and make people feel like their needs could be met inside, uh, you know, completely remote. And I actually have learned a couple lessons that I know we'll explore further as we get going. The first is while inside sales is not the same as outside sales, working, building relationships remotely is not the same as in person. If you do the job right, you can get surprisingly close. Uh, and the other thing is that inside sales brings efficiencies that are very hard to walk away from. So we'll explore those further as we dig into the walkthrough of how HubSpot supports that. I think it's important to note that since you all at HubSpot use HubSpot, this is a tool that's clearly proven to be successful in an inside sales environment, obviously. Definitely. So with that in mind, let's spend a few moments talking about what we need to do to organize business relationships. We're going to have a little bit of discussion on that, and then we're going to actually walk through how to uh, drive a sales process together using HubSpot. And Chris doesn't know this yet, but he's going to be a guinea pig for a little bit. So I hope he's in a mood to be a good sport because we're going to have some fun with Chris in a bit. Uh-oh. So uh, the first question we want to answer, you know, again, our topic here is leveraging HubSpot for sales success with a focus on how to be successful with inside sales. The first challenge is organizing business relationships. And Chris, I know we'll go back and forth a little bit on this. What do I mean when I say organizing your business relationships? So we're actually going to provide everyone with this graphic that walks through a series of, of uh, essentially concentric circles for the different kinds of business relationships. I'll take the first one. So the first one doesn't have one specific name. I tend to call it the core. Some people call it the bullseye. But these are the people at the absolute center of your business relationship environment. These tend to be promoters, people who are eager to tell uh, others about your business, evangelists, people who get it when it comes to your company's approach and value proposition. Influencers, so those people might not be customers, they may be industry experts or other allies or thought leaders and partners of your business who can either refer or serve as subject matter experts. This is the core and when we talk about what we're gonna do to drive sales success, it's so important to start here. So with that in mind, there's a next layer that we want to talk a little bit about. And it's one that might seem obvious to everyone here, but as we'll learn, it's one that's easily uh, under-focused or forgotten about. Chris? 
Yeah, so obviously we've got the customers here and that, that's you know, the prospect that we want to sell to today and, and satisfy today, right? And that you've already purchased from. Uh, and then you know, what are the ways we can do that? We want to leverage. We want to leverage that. We want to ask for new sales. We want to ask for repeat sales. You know, I could read the whole list to you. You can see it here. But the, the goal here is to really leverage uh, you know, resources and, and ask for those opportunities. Yes. And, you know, it's interesting when we ask customers all the time how often they talk to their customers in terms of asking for new sales, asking for referrals, uh, really digging in from a business development perspective. The answer is often, oh, right, we don't do that. <laughs> or <laughs> I don't know. Or uh, I know we did it at one point. So we're leaving money on the table by not focusing on a strategic sales approach to our customers. Yeah. And so, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, I'll add one more thing here. Um, when we were building out center source here in, in, in Nashville, it's something that we would implement uh, towards the end of the process. When we, when we had someone that decided to move forward, we made it a mission to, you know, to, you know, once they had a good, you know, experience, obviously we had got them to move forward. They would have the good experience. And then we would ask for our account managers or sales folks to go in there and ask for those referrals. Say, hey, we did a great mm. job for you. We really appreciate the great feedback. Um, would you mind connecting us uh, with one or two people? We used to ask for three. I thought three was a little aggressive. So we kind of put that down to one and two. Um, <laughs> but we really drove into that. And, and we found that, that that helps a lot. And now you've got, of course, that was 17 years ago. Now you've got reviews online. You can ask yes. for reviews online. You can add, there's, there's lots of different ways to go about this. But asking for referrals sometimes can feel uncomfortable, but it's necessary. And I'll, that. and I'll add that in my experience, asking for referrals often also leads to more opportunities with the customer you ask the question to, yep. because it gets them thinking about, geez, right. We haven't really talked about some of the new things we're doing. It's a good opener to additional dialogue about how you can serve the customers you already have as well. Yep. So the next ring in this concentric model is prospects. And the key thing I want to point out here is in the B2B market, sales teams typically drop a prospect after two to three follow-up attempts. And yet 30% of new sales are made after seven to 10 follow-up attempts. 30% of new sales only happen after seven to 10 follow-up attempts. And yet the average salesperson drops the ball at three because they don't want to be a pest or because they think there's no interest. I've had in my own situation as a CEO, salespeople who are writing to me saying, I haven't heard from you. I guess that's it. Goodbye. I'm like, mm, actually, no, I was just really, really busy. I have other things to do, but it doesn't mean I'm not interested. So <laughs> follow up, follow up, follow up and engage with prospects. And we'll talk about how to do that. The next piece of that puzzle is our leads. You know, what are some of the important things to do with leads, Chris? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with this, what you have here. It's like, there, there's no such thing as a stale lead. Um, it, it's just a missed opportunity. Um, we see this time and time again. Um, and to your point, you know, a lot of times uh, you have a lead and you might work that lead for a long time and it not move forward. And it may take eight, nine months for that lead to move forward. So I agree, there, there is no such thing as a stale lead. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, our job is to convert and nurture those over, over that's time. Right. And that's, that's really what we'll talk through uh, some is like, what, how, what does that process look like? How important is that? How can we help you uh, be efficient with that process? Um, I can't stress this piece enough. There's ways to automate it and make sure that things don't slip through the cracks because mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that we say five to seven, I've heard seven to 10. It's, it's, it's somewhere in that seven range. I, I think that, that, that seven outreaches, a lot of times when it's cold um, is the right number and, and mm -hmm. you've got to figure out a way to, to convert and nurture that or sorry, to nurture them over time. Yeah. To the, them. Yep. And the other thing that, uh, that you uh, alluded to uh, that we'll explore further is, well, what do I do with those seven outreaches? This is another place where a lot of people really don't realize how well empowered they can be to be successful with that follow-up process. If every follow-up is, hey, just touch and base, and there's nothing new, no new value to be offered, nothing new to discuss. You haven't set the table to generate interest, right? 
And of course, persistence is important. Persistence is a good skill, but what's better is persistence with value offered to the prospect. That's right. Then we talk about suspects, right? People who you uh, can identify that meet your criteria, but who don't know you yet. And one of the reasons that we take this directional approach, <clears throat> starting from the center and working our way out, is we're starting with people who know us best. And by the way, in the B2B world, these suspects, a lot of them know the people who are in the inner rings. So if we strengthen these relationships at these other levels, guess what's going to happen? When we reach suspects, we have a much higher likelihood that they're connected to someone we're connected with on LinkedIn, that they've heard of our company through our work with other people. I cannot emphasize that enough in the B2B world. Um, and so it's critical to attract suspects and to reach out with interesting information and opportunities, things that create value, okay? If we don't create value, we're just asking to be ignored. And then the last piece is the marketplace. And in order to use the marketplace successfully to generate suspects, we need to research, research, research. Um, we need to create clear buyer personas, which is something we could take a whole webinar just to talk about. <laughs> We need to use research databases and tools like LinkedIn to figure out not only who to target, but with what messages, what communications are gonna resonate with that audience. So to summarize, bring all that together, we need to organize our relationships and prioritize them, starting at that core with our promoters, evangelists, influencers, and partners. Then we need to strengthen relationships and find sales opportunities and referral opportunities with our customers. Then have a process of really driving opportunities with our prospects and getting them to a positive decision. Then making sure that those leads convert and that we nurture them and we don't give up on them too easily or too early. And then engaging suspects with information and potential re relationships that they're familiar with and taking all that knowledge and helping us strengthen our understanding of the marketplace. Chris, anything you want to add to this? Yeah, I would say uh, there, there's some really neat tools now out there that have nothing to do with HubSpot um, that are, are inexpensive, sometimes free, to get a lot of knowledge um, on the industries that you're trying to attack. And so mm -hmm. I would encourage people uh, to follow up with you or I after, after this webinar and, and get some of the you know recommendations on some of those tools that can really Absolutely. help because they don't cost a lot of money, but they can really help you hone in and build some some really good target lists um, that you can go after. Uh, and I, you know, there's tools out there like Discover.org that are great, but sometimes they're too mm -hmm. costly for people. Right. So there are alternatives, uh, and and I'd love to offer that as a kind of a follow up to people. Absolutely. And you know what you really hit upon, which I haven't specified, but it's probably implied. And that is that when you take an inside sales approach, in order to close that gap of, of a sense of intimacy that you can't replicate exactly as you do in the outside world, the key is research. You have to get to know people and companies and markets much more thoroughly. And so the number one piece of advice for a new inside salesperson is probably to start with good research um, as well yeah. as a disciplined process. So with concentric growth established, let's talk about one more component and then we're gonna dig into how we take all this and make it happen. And that is the building blocks for business relationships. I think it's important to understand that our focus on sales does not exist in a vacuum. And so that's why uh, our approach, we call this the B2B growth stack, and it's organized into two kinds of components. The first group we call the strategy components, the business strategy of the company and the brand strategy. And by the way, a lot of people get confused about brand strategy. They think brand strategy is purely about how we want to present ourselves to the market. There's no point presenting yourself to the market with a value proposition or a brand message that doesn't resonate with that market. So there needs to be a whole, you know, we're just talking about research. Again, 
you can figure that those things out on the fly if you're shaking hands, uh, you know, in, in contextual scenarios. When you're running from an inside sales perspective, primarily or exclusively, you need to get that brand message spot on if you're to attract and engage people. And then the other three pieces here are what we call the execution components. And yes, we're going to zero in on sales, but we are going to do it by utilizing tools and strategies from all three of these stackable elements, CRM, sales acceleration, and marketing automation. And pulling all that together is what we call the B2B growth stack. So with that in mind, let me go ahead and pause the presentation piece. Um, and I'm gonna suggest that we start talking about and showing everyone how this is actually gonna happen using a tool like HubSpot. Before we do that, I guess we should answer the question, Chris, what is HubSpot? HubSpot is a all-in-one sales, marketing, and service platform um, that helps businesses grow. It really just boils down to that. Um, we started off as a marketing company and just offering marketing tools to, to people. And what we found is people need a bunch of tools to be successful. And what people were having to do is go get different tools and tie them in together and integrate them and you know, it was, it gets really messy, it creates a lot of inefficiencies. So we wanted to build what we call the growth stack, right? Yes. So that you can just have everything in one place on one system of record. It's funny, it almost kind of matches a little bit of the, the graphic you had there, right? Everything is, is uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was an accident just or what, slightly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, everything is based on that CRM, that same system of record, and then all the tools kind of stem from there. Yes. Yes, so we're building on that foundation. And why is the CRM such a critical foundation from your perspective? And I think you nailed it with system of record. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's mainly it's the system of record. So you know everything that's going on with the client um, top to, start to finish, right? Um, the list that they're in, the activity that they've had, anything that's happened with that client, it's in one place. It's not it's spread out into different systems. It's not in mm. spreadsheets or in some people's email and not in other people's email or in this tool and not in this tool, right? It's all in one place for the entire team to come to and see everything that's happened with that client every step of the way along their journey from prospect to customer. And then hopefully to evangelist, right? That's the, yes. that's the goal at the end of the day. That's we right. talked a bit about that earlier, right? Yes. We want to be able to attract evangelists. We want to, to be able to, to nail in on that piece of it so you can start to build those referrals. And, and there's a piece now to HubSpot that helps with that. Awesome. So now that you've described it, let's actually take a look at it. I think that's a perfect segue. And as I mentioned to everyone earlier, uh, we are going to use Chris as our guinea pig so we are actually going to spend the next 20 minutes or so walking through a sales process in which Chris is going to be my prospect. Uh, and so the first thing I want to do is say we're now looking at the HubSpot platform. Okay. And like you said, it is an integrated, like everything that we're going to walk through is going to happen inside HubSpot. We're literally going to be able to do it all inside this one tool, which is so, so powerful. And so we're looking at Chris's record in the system. We'll talk a little bit about this, then we'll start our example sales process. So we're looking at a, a whole bunch of information about Chris. So this is a contact record. Those of you who are familiar with maybe ACT back from the 90s or even the 80s, uh, for those of us who go back that far, or you know, salesforce.com or any of those tools, I think the most important thing to understand is that you need to be able to look at and manage your relationships with actual people as effectively as possible. And so that's why we're not just seeing lists of lists. We're seeing information that can help me make better decisions. So here is a lot of information about Chris. These are all the, uh, the fields in the database. And we know uh, where he came from. We have his LinkedIn profile. We uh, have information about his location, his company. We have a lot of information about Chris. Then in the center of this screen is what you might refer to as the activity history or the timeline to take sort of a Facebook language approach. This is the timeline. And so this has all of our activity. Um, and by the way, Chris, you know how we talked about that connection between sales and marketing? Yep. Give us some, what are some of the things that show up in this timeline that the salesperson may never have actually done 
but that are important for that salesperson to be aware of that came from marketing? Yeah. So, um, you know, anytime a marketing email is sent out, anytime they're a part of a list, maybe they attended a webinar, maybe they opened a certain page on the website. I find that to be really valuable just mm. for myself is knowing where they're going on the site, no, having that knowledge ahead of time that they've, that they've drilled into, to, you know, marketing two times, if I'm using myself as an example, or, yes. you know, if you sell widgets that they've gone to a certain widget page three times prior to that discussion. So having all of that knowledge ahead of time is, is very powerful. Um, and it's all right there for a salesperson to see. And you can drill down into it, just like you said. You can mm. deselect everything, and then you can just look at page views. Or you can just look at the forms that they've submitted, right? So forth and so on. Um, and then the only other call out I would just say is, for those of you that are, are maybe newer um, on this webinar, on the left here in the About Us section, this is all customizable. These are the fields that people want to yes. see within their organization. There's a list of fields that come included just out of the box, ready to go that we'll help you with. But if you want to keep track of, you know, widgets, you can put mm -hmm. the word widgets over there and you can keep track of that. That's all customizable. Absolutely. And in fact, this is one of the customizable sections that we built for our cold outreach program. So we've actually enrolled Chris in the initiative tied to this event. We call that WSI or the Webinar Sales Initiative. He is enrolled in that initiative and we have all the steps of our process that way we've built it integrated right in here. We also, again, taking things a little bit of a step further, in addition to some of the standard capabilities to connect with LinkedIn, we track the person's LinkedIn profile URL. So here's Chris's record in LinkedIn. We also track whether or not I'm connected to Chris. So you can see here that I'm connected to Chris. I've saved him as a lead in my LinkedIn sales navigator and I've matched his contact. We've also got his LinkedIn company page URL here. So I've done a lot to be able to see what's going on with him and his company. Another thing that's really important to Wemp Partners, interestingly enough, since we primarily sell to CEOs, is the generational cohort of the CEO. So is the person that we're talking with uh, greatest generation, boomer, Gen X, millennial, Gen Z? The reason that's important to us is what we primarily sell is growth strategy and execution. And a boomer CEO who is looking to retire in three to five years is very different in what they need to achieve, their timeline, their priorities, their objectives, versus let's say a millennial CEO who maybe has a 25 year or 30 year timeline. Okay, so it's critical for us. So we actually, we generally pull that information from someone's LinkedIn profile. So we track information that probably you could count on one hand the number of other companies that do it, but in our own buyer persona research and market feedback, we found out the generational cohort was important. So we added that as a custom field in our system and we manage that data as part of our process of profiling uh, our prospects. And then to the last area, now these fields are blank because Chris did not come in through this process, but we use Zoom Info, a tool called Lead411, and we use LinkedIn Sales Navigator to pull data into the database. And for those records, that data is also filled in here. So if we ever want to go back and look at where this particular person came from, what additional record details were in that research database, we can do that. So, you know, we have some enterprise level clients that are working with tens of thousands of records and that data is very important to them. So absolutely, Chris, you're right on. And it's interesting to note here a couple of other things that are part of my universe. And again, I have not left this screen once except to, to open up Chris's LinkedIn profile and HubSpots. Here's his company, which we'll talk about in a moment. Here is his LinkedIn integration. Now, this is something that's uniquely part of the HubSpot product. There are only five or seven CRMs that have an official LinkedIn integration. This is one of them. And because of this capability, I can actually uh, click on this View More tool. And inside HubSpot, I'm able to see who we have as shared connections, any suggested icebreakers, which are usually based on news feeds. Uh, I have information on other people who can introduce us. So I can go through people who are connections, uh, related leads. 
So people who are in my sales navigator or other lead lists who have connections with Chris. So all of this information that can help me reach out to Chris. And of course, the other thing that I can do right from here is I can actually send him a message in LinkedIn using the send in mail function. And that will go directly to him through LinkedIn. Again, all from inside HubSpot. So as we get going here, one of the key questions is, well, how did, how did Chris end up in my database? Like, where did he start from? What lead list or what source? And so with that in mind, let's take a look at that question. And I'm really excited to say, here's the answer. So there's a gentleman named Chris Moore who was really excited about the Leveraging HubSpot for Sales Success webinar. How excited were you, Chris? Very. <laughs> Boom, as Dan Tired would say. <laughs> That's awesome. So Chris registered for our webinar, and he registered on Zoom, as all of you did. And so he is in this list of contacts that automatically came into HubSpot. And we actually can see that information here in our activity history. So if I uncheck everything and I just check uh, updates and events, we'll see that he uh, registered for this webinar. So there's our Zoom integration and a whole bunch of other things going uh, on here. So I have a process that I want to use to reach out to Chris. Again, remember, I can't just walk out, get in the car, drive to Nashville, which, by the way, I wouldn't be opposed to doing, and shaking hands with Chris uh, at the Texas Longhorns Regional Headquarters in Nashville. I have to find another way to engage him. So what are the tools at my disposal? One of the tools at my disposal, obviously, is email. Okay, so I can create an email right from here. So if I am using Outlook or Gmail um, or Office 365, I don't actually have to go into those tools to compose and send them an email. I can do it right from here, okay? In addition to that though, let's suppose, you know, like you saw, there's 70 plus people are registered for this webinar. I'm not gonna have time to write each one of them in the next, let's say, hour. So how am I gonna communicate on a personal note with 72 people? One of the things that I can do inside HubSpot is I can create a template. Chris, tell us a little bit about templates. Let's talk about templates and sequences, and then we're gonna actually walk through enrolling you in one and, and starting to reach out to you. Yeah, templates uh, is maybe the most used feature for myself. Um, mm -hmm. I use it because I figured out that most of my responses to people uh, generally like started off the same way or had the same content, especially when I was going through lists, right? And I was reaching out much like what you're talking about here is you want to repeat that message. You want to be consistent with it and you want to be able to move quick. So a template is simply just think of a, you know, a lot of times people I hear they have this word doc or they have one note open and they have copies of emails that they've sent in the past. So they have to go to this other app, they have to copy that email, and then they have to bring it into their email so they can move quick. You no yes. longer have to do that with templates. Now, when you go draft an email, just like you have here, it has all of that predetermined ready to go for you. And what I like about templates compared to even the solution with OneNote or a doc or something like that is there's personalization tokens built into that template. Mm. And so you see here at the top, right? You have the high contact first name. Now it's going to put that first name of that contact in that spot mm -hmm. in an automated way so that number one, you don't mess that up and misspell it as long as the data going into the CRM is good. But then also- Which reminds me, Chris, just as a yeah. quick side note, one of the things we did before this webinar is we reviewed everyone who registered and made sure that if some people you know, were quick and they registered with lowercase for their first name, we capitalized the first letter. Others had all caps on, maybe they're doing it from their phone. So you have to fix those things. By having a structured list, we set up a task and had a member of our team go through and get everything nice and neat and ready to go. Yeah, that's a great, and that's a great point. Great call out, but you can start to rotate things out, all kinds of different personalization tokens to use. You mm. can insert documents, right? You can have all of this stuff ready to go in the template yes. so that when you move through this list, you know that the message that they're getting is customized to them, but you're still just, it's a one click away, one yes. click, boom. Now they have all the right information. This is a game changer. This saves so much time. It's not even funny. So I use this probably the most of any of our tools. 
and what have we got popped in here, my friend? This is a, so it looks like this is a, an actual document, right? Um, From HubSpot got, documents, you got mm -hmm, it. That's right. So you've got a document put in there. What's neat about documents is when you, when you start to load these in and sometimes these are PDFs with, you know, information on, uh, on the business. Sometimes um, these are documents uh, for a proposal, whatever that is that you load in and it's ready to go. What's nice about this is when someone opens that email and they click on that document, not only do you get notified that they clicked on the, uh, on the email, right? You get that in real time, yes. but also separately, you get notified that they clicked on the document, that they stayed on page one for five seconds, page three for, you know, 30 seconds. And so you can start to do some analysis on is that document good? If people are jumping off in three seconds, your document probably sucks. You probably need to replace that. <laughs> right. It's you know? not holding people's attention or interest. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And so this is the actual ebook that we are going to provide to everyone after the program. It's loaded in our HubSpot documents tool. So then when you get it, instead of getting that PDF attachment at the bottom, which has no intelligence and no awareness associated with it, when you, every one of uh, the people on today's uh, webinar, you'll get this nice little graphical preview. You'll click, and then when you open it up, you'll be able to open it up in this nice viewer. You can download it, you can share it, you can look at the table of contents and skip to different sections. Hyperlinks are supported in it, so it makes the whole thing come to life. So this is literally exactly what we're gonna be doing. So to go back to this example, we've set up two email templates, okay? We're gonna add the YouTube link here, so you'll get, everyone will get the YouTube link, the free ebook. We've got a link to our HubSpot CRM support packages. So there's a whole bunch going on here. The last thing I wanna mention here is this, uh, what is, tell us a little bit about scheduling. Uh, Chris, we've got this thing here, it says uh, schedule a meeting with me using this link. Yep. So uh, if, you know, sometimes people are familiar with tools like Calendly or there's a couple other tools out there, mm -hmm. but basically you're giving uh, your prospect or if it's, you know, a customer at the time, you're giving someone um, the ability to book a meeting directly on your calendar and then also on their own calendar. So they can pick a time that works best for them. I think we've all been in the, you know, nine email war back and forth, trying to pick the right time. And nine. Like, How about 19? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, and forget about it if there's two, three, four, five people. Right. And so something to, to note here too, is you can have these links and include multiple people within the organization right. as opposed to it just going to one calendar. I think that's a good call out as well. That's a huge advantage. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's basically what this is, is that's, it's, it's drawing people to say, Hey, this content looks good to you. Great. I want to give you a way to book time on my calendar and let's, let's take the next step and then boom, they're right there. They don't, you don't have that back and forth. So where I'm going with this is we're combining a whole bunch of elements here. You know, this is a template, but it's not just a template. It's a template it's a template that's intelligent with personalization tokens. It's a template with documents that are loaded from another tool inside HubSpot. It's a template with links. It's a template with a scheduling function uh, using HubSpot meetings. And by the way, the other call out I wanna make on HubSpot meetings is that you can create different meeting types, even if they refer to the same person or calendar. So if I have a discovery calls that are gonna be 20 minutes, and then I wanna do HubSpot familiarization calls that are 30 minutes, I can set both of those up as different links. Yep, and then that you can way, record accordingly on that. Absolutely. So, the, so we've set this up, this is our first template, and then there's a second template with even more information. We're gonna remind people about the free uh, call that they can have with us. They can learn online and sign up for HubSpot Academy. And then we uh, are gonna have some additional information here. Now, Chris, I've got two templates. I got 70 plus people. How am I gonna remember to, to sequence this? That's a lot of, even if I am able to do it, you know, one after the other after the other and get all this organized, it still seems like I've got to do a lot. What is a way that I can organize these sequence, uh, excuse me, these templates together and make this more efficient for me as a salesperson? Yeah, well, you cheated a little bit. Um, so, <laughs> <is the word. laughs> um, but yes, the sequences, what I like about sequences, and if you pull one up here, you can see a sequence is really just a series of templates, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can see here in this example, you'll have the first template 
if you will, will, will be sent. And then after a certain amount of days and you determine that it could be three, four, 10, doesn't you, you, you call that out. You can start to build in tasks in between uh, the next email that goes out. So you can see here, the first email goes out, then you have a call. Um, you have a task to call someone because it should always be email, call, email, call, right? Mm -hmm. You should, should always like kind of mix those in instead of just sending five emails and hoping for the best. And, right. then you, and then you'll see after that calls made, you can start to see uh, there's a box there. I don't know, it's pretty small for everybody, but continue without completing the task or, or, or vice versa. Um, and then it'll go to the next email and so forth and so on. And so what this does is this allows for you to kind of set it and forget it and be able to focus in on other areas that you need to be focusing on with the business and actually having those calls that need to be happening. You've got that all automated. And once someone responds to that email, right, then it will end the sequence so that they don't continue to get that, that communication. Right. So the sequence's goal is to get someone to engage. So let's talk about engaging you, Chris. You ready to get engaged with Wend Partners and HubSpot? Let's do this. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, send you a follow-up communication here. Now, I'm doing this as a template just because a sequence, we can't demo all of the time in the sequence in a matter of minutes since it's set to happen over a course of days. But I'm going to send you this email, okay? And then at the bottom here, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to create a task to follow up in two business days, let's say. And I'm going to point out that at WAM Partners, we've set up an email signature call to action that brings Chris so, Chris, if you click on that, where's that going to bring you to? Sorry, did you want me to click on the email? Uh, sure, you can, but I'm just going to show it on my screen anyway, right? So, you did you receive the email? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to click on that right now. Two awesome. I did. Yep, I have it here. So, when you clicked on the bottom uh, of that email, it brought up our meetings link, right? It did, yep. So this is, again, a HubSpot function. It's hosted on our, uh, our web domain. So it's at connect.wentpartners.com. So let's suppose Chris goes in here, and I've had this happen. I have had people I've never actually talked to schedule a meeting with me. In fact, a couple of the people in today's webinar did that, and I've had calls with them earlier in the week. So let's say we're going to do a 20-minute meeting at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday the 15th, okay? fill out the necessary information. We're going to confirm that. All right. And then we both get that confirmation, which I like. And what I like yes. even more that seems to impress a lot of people is it sends a reminder email out as well. And that could be two hours, two days. And that just helps keep people on task and yes. know that, hey, we have this meeting coming up. So that reminder email, sometimes it's we don't talk enough about it, but it's clutch. It's awesome because everybody is reminded, everybody gets the potential of, of setting it up as a calendar invite. It's totally seamless. Now, the other thing I'll point out here is since his record was an existing record, the system actually updated the record with the information that you put in. So in the, in the example I had it set as 5551212, you had a different phone number before, that's your new phone number, that automatically updated in HubSpot from him just booking a meeting with me. The other thing is, let's suppose I want to check in with another colleague, my good man Tristan, who's one of our inside salespeople, and I want to say, uh, hey, Chris and I are talking, Any, uh, anything you want me to know? Okay, and Tristan will get an automatic notification, just like uh, tagging someone in Slack. And we can have a conversation about this call. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let's say it's time for the call. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and give a call to you, Chris. Do you mind? I'd love for you to. All right, so I'm doing this inside HubSpot. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up something that I want to use. Hey, Chris. Awesome. You got the call. Hey, Chris, yeah. it's Doug Went from Went Partners. I'm really excited to spend the next 20 minutes exploring HubSpot with you. Did you like the webinar? Yes, I'd love to buy everything. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Chris. I'm looking forward to next steps. <laughs> so we would normally call that a discovery call. One of the things that I did here is I actually used a tool called Snippets. I don't know if you caught it, but I 
I uh, used the pound sign and typed webinar. And in doing that, it pulled up the list of questions that I want to answer on a call with Chris about the webinar. So I have my key questions right there. I can select an outcome. Great. We had an excellent conversation. So we were connected. This was, let's say, an introductory call. I'm going to create a task to follow up with him in a couple more days. And now I have, by the way, on certain editions of HubSpot in states where it's permitted, I also get a recording and an actual transcript of the call inside HubSpot. So then I can search for and review that information. So we've got a lot going on here. Let's go ahead and send Chris that follow-up email from today's call. I'm going to use another template that we have, which is called our discovery call thank you and meeting confirmation. Uh, there are a couple of prompts here for me to um, uh, type additional details on the fly. Okay, and when I send that, you'll notice there's something else that I think is worth pointing out. And that is that in this process, because Chris booked a discovery call with me, something else is going to happen as well. And that's that we're going to use a workflow in HubSpot to automatically generate uh, let me just get to the right screen here. Here it is. So when Chris scheduled his meeting with me, and we call that a discovery call, so therefore we know that's a sales opportunity, we actually have a process using the workflows in HubSpot to automatically generate follow-up actions. So by scheduling that meeting, we, able, we generate a new sales opportunity that goes into our deal flow. We're able to then generate quotes to that, we're able to look at his company at the top level, by which I mean, let's see everything that's going on in our business relationship with HubSpot. So by clicking on the company, I'm now looking at the whole picture of not just Chris, but his colleagues, Carl, Julie, and Sophie. I'm looking at everything that's happening across the company. And uh, the other thing that I'll point out here is, Chris, tell us a little bit about this target accounts tool, which to me is like a secret weapon in HubSpot. Yeah, so if anybody's familiar with ABM, account-based marketing, we, that's, that's essentially what this is. We call it target accounts because, you know, we like to think about it a little bit differently. But at the end of the day, this is a view for you to really understand uh, a, a kind of a full synopsis of what's going on with that target, right? So you can see all of the activity. You can see in that particular person how many times they viewed particular pages or received emails, right? What are some additional contacts within the company? Who are the internal stakeholders, right, within that business that are going to help make some decisions on moving forward? And if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see um, there's, there's an opportunity to track deals if you have open deals. Um, and then very specifically, the page views will give you a list of, the, uh, of those page views. So this tool is, is ultra powerful. Mm. Um, one thing I did want to mention too, just very quickly yes, go ahead. Um, on the proposal piece, when you have that automation kick in, I know some of you are probably thinking, Oh, well, our, you know, we're a special snowflake and our process is very different. You're all special snowflakes in my opinion, by the way, but uh, <laughs> just know, just know this. Uh, when that quote gets created, if you have a customized process, you can at least have the quote created and then you can go back in and you can edit that and, and make and be a little bit more drilled into it um, mm. because you might be going, oh, well, we don't sell widgets or we don't sell software. So we can't just quickly create a quote and then go to the next step. There, there needs to be some thought into that. So just know that that process, while, they're, while it's automated, you can still go in and change that quote to fit exactly how you do it today. But it, it's, it helps you stay streamlined in that process. So I just wanted to call that piece out. Absolutely. You know, and what you're really hitting upon, Chris, so here is our, our deal flow tool, and I'm going to create a new deal for you. Huge opportunity. And these are our deal stages, which are all customizable. So this is how we run our sales process. Okay, it's a $500,000 opportunity. It's going to happen in the next three weeks. I love you, man. I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and create this deal. And the thing that I want to point out is that when we actually create quotes from inside HubSpot, we are able to walk through the entire process from here. So let's create a quote for this deal and see what happens. 
So literally, again, I'm still in HubSpot, okay? I can create this uh, quote. Let's give him, uh, he doesn't deserve 90 days. Let's give him 30 <laughs> days, okay? It's going to go to Chris at HubSpot. HubSpot Inc. Okay, next. And then we can add a product from our um, initial engagements. So let's have him do a business growth playbook engagement with WAM Partners. And next. And I want him to have an e-signature. I want him to be required to sign it. Um, I'm going to have a uh, Doug or Julie from my team be the counter signer. If we had a connected Stripe account, we could have him pay online. So literally walking through this entire process, by the way, I never wrote this description of what's the business growth playbook. All that information just came right in. And now I've created a quote. And in fact, let's take a look at that quote. And just a quick heads up, uh, give this about a week and a half. And uh, I can't go into all of the details, but in about a week and a half, this gets a lot better. Just a heads up, just a little teaser for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is pretty darn good. Yeah, it's already uh, good, but yeah, yeah. The key phrase I want people to think about is reducing friction. The reason that I call this the inside sales revolution is because we have the opportunity to reduce friction. Friction is all that stuff that slows you down selling and slows the prospect down deciding. We've literally in about 15 to 20 minutes walked through an entire process. Chris registered for webinar. We enrolled him in a sequence. We sent him a series of personalized emails. He opened some documents. He expressed interest. Schedule a meeting automatically. We did the call inside HubSpot. After the call, I had the notes. I was able to send him a follow-up email, create a proposal tied to a deal. The deal is tied to a deal stage. So I've got my pipeline. I send him exactly what he wanted to buy. And now with one click, he can e-sign, he can pay, purchase, Deal done. Deal um, done. Boom is right. So, Chris, I'm about to hop over uh, to closing thoughts and take some questions. Anything else you want to mention at this stage? No, I would just say, you know, just something to think about, uh, just food for thought in, in a quick 30 seconds is a lot of times people have to, to achieve the same results with everything that we just ran through. Yes. You've got to go get a CRM, then you've got to get bolt-on applications like a calendar app and an outreach app. And before you know it, all of these different technologies, they start to add up and cost-wise, that's number one. But number two, the inefficiencies that come from having to integrate all of those together, that becomes yes. a big problem. And I'm sorry for the dog. Huge. In the no, it's fine. And you're absolutely right. Uh, a lot of people get excited about this tool, that tool, the other tool, this tool, this tool, that tool. And every tool that you add adds complexity, confusion, risk. Gee, I didn't want that field to go there. How did that come here? If we can do all this in one database, in one tool, the power is unbelievable. So with that, let's open it up to questions in our final minutes here. So if you have a question for us, type that question in the Q&A tool inside Zoom, and we will be happy to answer it. I'm going to go ahead and pop out uh, one question that's in the list already, and that is, um, what about video? Chris, tell us a little bit about video and HubSpot. Yep. This is, uh, this is one of my favorite parts as well. Um, when you are like the way we have it set up today, uh, we've got templates ready to go. And I just have like an insert video here. And mm -hmm. that way you can really start to personalize that message, especially in today's time when sometimes you're just talking to someone over the phone or it's through a Zoom. To have that personal connection and that follow-up, it's huge. Conversion rates we know are through the roof. We've, we've essentially um, all started to do that on the HubSpot side. Mm. It's almost kind of a required thing now because we've seen the conversion rates shoot up and to be able to, you know, create a video in 60 seconds or less, and then add that as a hyperlink with a nice little image into the template. Uh, it just, it creates a better experience with a higher close rate and a more personal experience. You know what, Chris, I'm going to take 30 seconds and do it. You said 30 seconds, right? Yep. Let's do it. Let's do it. Start the clock. I'm in right. Chris's record. I want to create an email. Great. Okay. I could use a template. In this case, what I'm going to do is say, uh, here, here are my thoughts, Chris. And now I'm going to go down here 
and I'm going to say insert video. I'm going to create a new video on the fly from my computer while we're in this webinar. Three, two, one. Hey, Chris, so glad you came to the webinar. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Let's talk. Click on the link below. Book a meeting with me. 20 minutes, no obligation. Let's dig into HubSpot together, my friend. I look forward to it. Stop. Give it a couple seconds here. There it is. You can just insert it right there. Chris, yep, and you're done. let's talk. Go. Insert. Chris, let's talk. S create a task to follow up in three days. Send the email. Chris, how many seconds was that? It was less than 30 seconds. Less than 30 seconds. Okay. We have time for one more question. Is it possible to start uh, to add people to HubSpot who, like, if I have 30 people, but some of them are only occasional users, is this going to get expensive? Is it? So is, uh, the question is, can you add, can you add, like, so like an well, like in a lot of small companies, right, you might have three to five actual salespeople, a couple of marketing people, and Got then it. maybe you want your accounting coordinator to be in. You right. know, that could get expensive. How does HubSpot handle that? Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, yeah. Um, no, it's fine. The way we do it uh, is, is quite interesting, and I'll say this very quickly, but uh, we do not charge for every single uh, email or user, mm. uh, much like other companies. So if the accounting team typically wants to get into the CRM, that's a paid user. It's, a, it's, a, it's an email account. It's a paid user. We only charge for the folks that are using the tools. So if you have five salespeople and 20 other people that aren't in sales that need access because they need to view data or pull contact numbers or even enter data in a lot of cases, we don't charge for that. That's key. That's spectacular. So yeah. I can have non-sales and marketing users access our system of record, and I don't have to worry about spending half my budget having someone who t t checks in once a week, you know, being a huge part of my cost. Okay. I think that's extremely important to know because, again, this is designed to be your system of record for your relationships with your customers across the board. So closing reminders, because guess what? We successfully closed our $500,000 deal with Chris in the last 20 minutes, and we are at 1259 Eastern. So again, this program is being recorded. Everybody here will get the recording. You know you're going to get it because you saw the email that's going to include the link. <laughs> in addition, you will receive instructions to set up your own free test account to learn about HubSpot and start exploring it. And of course, I encourage you to click that button in real life and book a 20 20-minute call with me at no obligation to dig into HubSpot and see how we can make inside sales revolution a reality for you and your team this fall and winter uh, as we head into the next phase of this very unusual selling environment, but one that's loaded with opportunity. Chris, closing thoughts? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for the time today. Uh, really, uh, it's, you know, I hope you got some, some value out of that and uh, look forward to working with you in the future. Awesome. Take care and be safe. Absolutely. Chris, thank you so much. As always, it's a great pleasure, my friend. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for an hour of your day. Have a good one, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.